Hi, welcome to week three, Essentials. This week, we really dive into nouns and pronouns. So I have my charts in front of me, and I also have the weekly lessons. And I just wanted to go through a few tips, some things that are fun in class. And if you've already had your class, these are some things that you can do at home with your kids. So at week three, we will start tasks and begin simple diagramming. So it's important to remember what a simple sentence structure is. And like we said in the other video, simple, you make an S and you snap because there's a subject and there's a verb and that's a simple sentence. If it starts with a capital letter, ends with an appropriate end mark, has a subject and a verb, and it makes complete sense, then you have a simple sentence, okay? They can be declarative, and like we've said, you can take D's and you declare, make a statement, and they end in a period. Or this week we're also making them exclamatory. They express strong emotion and end with an exclamation point. SVI, if you remember from verbs, VI is safe. It's, it's cut off. There's, the action is just happening. You're not transferring the eating to something else like pizza or pie just eating. So if you see that it's just happening, but it's not happening to something specific, then that's verb intransitive. It's not transferring action from the subject to an object. Okay, so nouns, there are ways that we can use them, and then they also have attributes. In other words, ways to describe them. And these are two very distinct lists, and it's so much fun. So I'm gonna get rid of our little, you know your homeschool mom when your fingers always look like colored markers, right? But let's just go to the definition of the word noun. When you're really little, you learn that a noun is a person, place, or thing. That's pretty typical, right? Well, we're gonna say a noun names, a noun names, a noun names. And what is the common letter N, right? If you tie this in with your kids, Nomen, like we talked about in the Essentials Overview, nomen in Latin means name, and we get noun from this. And then nominative, we've learned that nominative is subject in Latin, right? Nominative, subject. So some of your links are going to tie together this week. Nomen, name, nominative, subject. So it's pretty cool. You can put all that together. And so we're going to talk about subjects and objects and possessive nouns in a minute. But first, let's just go through the definition. A noun names a person, place, thing, activity, or idea. Okay? A noun names a person, place, thing, activity, or idea. So let's talk about our usages. We have S, P, I, D, O right? And you can say spido, and we're just going to end there for a second. These are usages. So a noun names, nominative subject. A noun can be used as the subject, and that's what the S stands for. So at class the other day, my friend Elise, she had made cupcakes. So I'm going to make a sentence just like we did in class, okay? Elise baked. Period. All right, that's S V I. It's not transferring anything, right? If you were going to go through tasks one through three, you would label them. That's the subject, and it's nominative. It's a noun, right? Subject noun. We're going to label them either S N for noun or S P for pronoun. Elise is a noun because it's a name, right? And then baked, V I. She just baked. Well, she didn't just bake. I mean, Elise baked cupcakes. So, and I love that we're using cupcakes because you're going to see something really special about the word cupcakes when we get to some of these attributes. So now this changes because she didn't just bake, she baked something very specific. What did she bake? Cupcakes. So this becomes the object that got the direct action of the baking oven, right? So that becomes the direct object. And remember, I said object. The, you get, the O's are going to be nouns and pronouns. Okay? So 
So that's a clue. So now, Elise baked cupcakes. You could go through tasks one through three, and with this, your outline would look like that. Okay, and you can find the shapes of your outlines for diagramming through your patterns list. Because now you have, have SVTDO. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of that for a second. All right, let's continue on though. In this sentence, Elise is the subject. Let's, I'm gonna pull out the chart so we're looking at it. Another role or use, remember nouns are like a hand. It doesn't just have one use, you can do lots of things. So today we're talking about nouns. It can be the subject. It can be a possessive noun adjective. Whose cupcakes were delicious? And if we wanted to pick a new word instead of just delicious, we could say scrumptious. That's even a better. You can choose better and best words in class, right? So now whose cupcakes were delicious or scrumptious? Elise's. Elise's cupcakes were scrumptious. And here, I'm not just declaring it. I am exclaiming it. Elisa's cupcakes were scrumptious. That's very exciting. I'm going to express some strong emotion in that one. Now, is Elise the subject? Was Elise scrumptious? Because I did not eat Elise, nor did I bake her. <laughs> we baked the cupcakes, the cupcakes. So this now is the noun, the subject noun. Okay, the cupcakes were scrumptious. Whose cupcakes? Elise's. If you circle the apostrophe S, those are your possessive. Do you see that? They are her cupcakes. Elise's cupcakes were scrumptious. So then Elise's becomes the possessive noun adjective because that is describing, adjectives describe the cupcakes. They're not just normal cupcakes, they are Elise's cupcakes and they were scrumptious, exclamation point. Now I stands for indirect object. Remember in the last video I said, if I jump in there, I want the object. I wanted the cupcakes. So Elise baked, I'm gonna change this one here. I'm gonna put Mrs. Schroyer right there. I'm gonna jump in there, okay? With that post. Elise baked Mrs. Schroyer cupcakes. Now that changed this pattern to S-V-T-I-O-D-O, -O, and you're gonna learn that more later in the year. But the indirect object, I jumped in to receive those cupcakes. And now Mrs. Schroyer is a noun because it's a name, right? And it's being used as an indirect object. If I were gonna use Elise, just to keep it using the word Elise, I could say um, Mrs. I, maybe I returned the favor. Mrs. Schroyer gave Elise a hug for the cupcakes. I gave what? I didn't give Elise away. I gave the hug away, but Elise jumped in there to get it. So Mrs. Schroyer gave Elise a hug. If I wrote that out here, you could identify Elise as the indirect object. But let's keep going. Direct object, those are these, right? Direct objects, and we've already talked about those a lot. Baked what? Cupcakes. Gave what? A hug, okay? Those would be the direct objects. They're getting the verb action directly. And then OP is the object of a preposition. So, um, Elise baked Mrs. Schroyer cupcakes with sprinkles, okay? With sprinkles, sprinkles is gonna be the object of the preposition, okay? If I wanted to use the least there, I could say, um, Mrs. Schroyer enjoyed cupcakes with Elise. And then we would have Elise changing up her usage and she would be, become the object of the preposition. I hope that makes sense. It just gives you something you can think about and play with at home. I always encourage people to play with the charts, dialogue about the charts. The charts are here for dialectic discussion me and my daughter having discussion, my daughter and I discussing things around the table, right? So, can you remember objects of the preposition, point back to Latin where we said there's a blah, 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 there's extra words, there's a phrase here, a prepositional phrase with sprinkles, with Elise, okay? 
So now, those are ways that a noun can be used. Now we've drawn this line and we're going to talk about attributes. Attributes, ways that you can identify them, are, um, oh no, wait, sorry, we're not going to get attributes yet. These Pona, we're going to skip P and O because those are later. Um, those are um, predicate nominatives and object complement nouns. These are a little harder. We'll wait on that because you don't need to understand it at week three, I promise you. But we are going to go ahead and talk about the NDA. Okay, NDA is noun of direct address. And then a positive. This was really easy to um, teach in class because if I said, if I said to Elise, Elise, comma, bake cupcakes. Am I directly addressing a name? Am I directly addressing a noun? Yes. I'm talking to Elise. And I say, Elise, bake me, or I'll just say bake cupcakes. Bake cupcakes. Okay, at least bake cupcakes. So here I'm di I'm directly addressing her. These have a little song if you want to learn it. It goes, a noun of direct address is used to call upon a person and is set off by one or more commas. And I did it to this military march because it's like, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir, I'm directly addressing you, okay? Um, Sadiella, clean your room, yes, ma'am. <laughs> a noun of direct address is used to call upon a person and is set off by one or more commas. Yes, ma'am, yes, sir. Okay, then a positives. If I said my friend, Elise, baked cupcakes, okay? My friend baked cupcakes, so this is the subject noun. What did Elise become? This is an appositive. I'm gonna sing a definition for appositive. An appositive is a noun or pronoun directly beside another noun which explains or identifies it. Am I explaining or identifying who the friend is? Yes. The friend is not just any friend. It's a very specific friend, Elise, baked the cupcakes. I'll sing it one more time. And a positive is a noun or pronoun directly beside Another noun which explains or identifies it. So if I had my dog, Rover, or the dog, or the gerbil, Freddy, okay? My friend, Elise, if you're explaining or identifying, that is an a positive. All right, so there you go. Those are the noun usages. I'm going to do another video. I'm going to erase this. We'll do a second video for the noun attributes, and then I'll do a third video for pronouns. All right? Hold tight. I'll be right back.